Um, I think that it was, if you look at it from the perspective of how do we protect the farmer, uh, this was probably the only move that the government had. Um, it's a short-term fix. Essentially, we can think of it as a, a subsidy. I mean, the government can pay what the market couldn't, and in that sense, insulate the farmer a little bit from the decline in prices that we've seen, uh, you know, throughout this year, which started in West Africa, and and now we're seeing it here in East Africa with our harvest. Um, so I think it, in the short term, it's a it's a quick fix, um, but it, it 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 does the positive side. I think what what I'm very happy to see is the renewed focus on value addition on processing. Um, I think that is that was important. Mm. Fahad, tell me how hit was the cashew nut industry? You mean this year, uh, in terms of uh, the prices? Yes. Yeah. So his so prices for cashew have been on the incline for the past three years. And when Tanzania harvested uh, last year, it had reached the peak. So we're in the Southern Hemisphere. So our harvest is at uh, around October. But in West Africa, the harvests begin in February. And so in Ivory Coast, we saw that prices did start to decline. Uh, it was just the market uh, reacting to, to the high prices. And it did uh, subdue demand slightly. Um, and so we saw that decline continue. And there were a lot of processors in Vietnam, because as, as you might know, um, Africa doesn't process its own cashews. So 90% is exported raw in shell uh, to India and to mainly to Vietnam from West Africa. Um, and so when prices kept going down, the Vietnamese had purchased at X and prices were declining, so they're caught with a product that is decreasing in value. And when it reached uh, the port in, in Ho Chi Minh, some of them weren't able to actually uh, take it to their factories because now they're holding a stock that, that essentially doesn't have the same value as what they paid. Uh, it, the banks now also started to recall loans. Um, and so a lot of processors that were small and couldn't take that hit uh, they did have to close up shop. Um, so so this, this decline in, in prices has affected the industry quite a bit. Uh, it has also increased the level of, of stock of raw cashew that is available in the market, which is why you didn't see a real uptake from buyers uh, during our harvest season here in Tanzania. Mm. Now, uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about uh, the prices, of course. Just uh, two years ago, we did see a very big uh, plunge, of course, there with uh, America and Europe uh, falling out on uh, the demand with uh, Tanzania and also some of the West African countries. But in the wake of this week, this was a very different conversation as we saw prices hiking, of course, on the back of the, uh, the decision that uh, uh, President uh, John Pombe Magufuri and his government had to make. Tell me. At this particular moment as we speak, or maybe today, what does the market for cashews and the prices look like? So prices are up about 12% since uh, the start of, I would say, the season. And it is on the back of the fact that uh, if Tanzania withdraws its raw cashew from the market, um, last year we accounted for about 9% of global production. This year, it's going to be a bit less, uh, maybe about 6%. But it, we harvest at a time when demand is, is actually a bit higher and supply is low, as we're in the southern hemisphere and Tanzania is the largest uh, cashew producer that harvests at this time. And so the market is reacting uh, to the prospect that there is going to be a shortage of, of cashews at this time until the, the harvest begins in in the norm northern hemisphere countries. Uh. Mm. Of course, uh, Fahad, of course, just uh, about yesterday we saw news coming from Tanzania where uh, President Magufuli was saying that 
the government or the Tanzanian people prefer Chinese because they don't have strings attached and they ask for way too less requirements. Today, we're also reading about the Chinese farm that is uh, supporting uh, Tanzania to process about 5,000 tons of cashews per year. Is the world about to go nuts? <laughs> it's a good question. So this is, uh, I actually know this, this, this firm um, and they had a facility that they had set up uh, previously. Uh, I think that it hadn't been in operation because they weren't able to get the raw materials. But, but now, I mean, with the government buying all the stock and essentially needing, wanting to process it all in country, uh, it, it really means all hands on deck. Um, and I think the Chinese have, uh, have done well to take advantage and uh, seek um, to, to partner with the government to process that, that crop. Um, it, like I said, it does bring a renewed focus to processing, which previously uh, we hadn't seen here in, in Tanzania. All right. Now, finally, uh, Fahad, of course, before I let you go, I would like to look at uh, the current demand. Of course, we uh, mostly spoke about the European market and spoke about the U.S., but we're not necessarily looking at how much demand cashew nuts are on African markets, of course. Tell me, do we see enough demand on this particular cash crop? I think, I think that that is maybe the biggest opportunity that exists uh, for uh Tanzania and, and other African countries is to trade within Africa. Uh, Michael, I'll give you an example. I was in Kigali for the uh, Agra conference in September, the and NGRF. I went to the supermarket in uh, in Kigali, and um, you know I went and I, and I bought cashews. Uh, I wanted to see where they come from, and so these cashews came from Belgium, uh, and this is interesting because Belgium doesn't produce cashews, we know, but the origin was maybe Vietnam most likely Vietnam. They're the largest uh, exporter to Europe. And 80% of what Vietnam processes comes from, from Africa. So the journey of these cashews was from Africa to Vietnam, to Europe, and then back to, to Africa in, in a supermarket in Kigali. Um, and so we can, we can capture more value by processing and going all the way to a finished product. And also just starting by supplying regional markets like Kigali, uh, like Rwanda, like uh, Zambia, like South Africa, which offers a, a big market. I was in Johannesburg, and they're importing cashews from, from Vietnam as well. But these uh, cashews are from Vietnam. Most of them originate from Africa. That's what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. 80% yeah. of what Vietnam processes uh, comes from Africa. So they import about a million tons a year mm -hmm. from Africa. Yeah. So, so as, a, as a continent, I think... We're seeing, uh, you know, a new wake-up call, a mm. renewed vigor towards processing and value addition. I mean, it's a conversation that we've had continuously on on other commodities, and and we know that Africa produces a lot of raw materials. But but now I think we're seeing the urgency of it. When the market is down, is when you're really going to feel that impact. 